Hello and welcome to the Controller Chronicles HD. In this installment, I'm talking about the NES Advantage, a joystick released by Nintendo in 1987 exclusively for the NES in North America and Europe. There is no Japanese Famicom counterpart of the NES Advantage. The NES Advantage has many, um, well, advantages over the original Japanese Famicom joysticks that came out earlier. This thing is loaded with features, but I'll get into that in just a moment. The NES Advantage was, for many kids, including myself, their first exposure to an arcade-style joystick that could be found in the home that closely mimicked that the appearance of a real arcade panel, something that you'd find in a real arcade. However, appearances can be deceiving, as although it appears to be um, that similar to a real arcade joystick, it is only a facsimile. This, this joystick has a number of problems that actually prevents it from being nearly as good as what you might suggest it is. Um, so let's go over some of its features. First of all, the joystick is fairly large, especially considering this was, you know, at the time made for children who with, you know, fairly small hands. You have um, this joystick here, which actually acts as a, basically a giant D-pad by depressing um, the four buttons up, down, left, and right. Um, and it simply has, you know, the same sort of, um, you know, rubber pressure mount um, copper thing underneath it that depresses where you're pressing the buttons. There's no micro switches involved, and that means that this is actually, you know, stands the test of time far better than what you might expect from micro switches, because micro switches probably wouldn't last 25 years and still be kicking. Well, the NES Advantage, you know, definitely has that advantage going on. Um, it has two large buttons for the B and A buttons, just as what you normally would expect. However, these buttons are, again, just simply oversized face buttons, the same kind of buttons that you'd find on a standard um, handheld controller. Uh, the NES 004 controller, for example, would have basically the same kind of buttons, except these were far bigger. However, there is a problem with this, though. Again, by not using micro switches, these buttons actually feel a little bit loose in their housing. And if you depress the button by pressing the button on the edges, it is actually possible for you to get the button stuck. And then when the button gets stuck, it has to you have to depress it again somewhere in the middle to get it to click back in place. This is the major disadvantage of the NES Advantage. Um, because of this, when you're furiously pressing the buttons for, you know, um, like a beat em up or something like that. Um, one of the major problems with this is sometimes the buttons will get stuck and then you might be, be get hit because you won't be able to, you know, block or you know, might not be able to shoot fast enough. However, the thing does have a number of other cool features. For one thing, it has built-in turbo buttons, which can be enabled by simply pressing them down, which then they press down, and you can clearly see which button has been in turbo enabled. Um, both buttons can be turbo enabled. And above that are potentiometers here. The potentiometers are really cool because what they do is they allow you to adjust um, where um, the turbo rate goes to. You can have it to be very low or very, very high. This means that instead of having an arbitrary, you know, six um, presses per second or eight presses per second or nine presses per second, you can adjust it to be whatever you want. This is great because some games um, don't respond well to very low button presses per second, and some games don't respond well to very high button presses per second. It really depends on the game, and so because of that, the NES Advantage definitely has that uh, advantage. It also has LEDs that show you when, when the buttons are being depressed and you know how quickly um, they're being depressed by how quickly they flash. Um, there are the start and select buttons, just as normal, and there's also a slow button. The slow button functions as basically turbo start. Um, again, this depends on the game that you're that you're playing, but unlike the B and A buttons, there is no potentiometer to control the rate of the turbo start button. However, you don't really need it because there's only very few early um, NES and Famicom games um, really used um, the would really take advantage of that because basically all you're doing is just basically pressing start, 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 which would make the game pause, unpause, pause, unpause, pause, unpause, unpause, you know, etc., etc. And ex 
and like basically what you get is a simulated slowdown mode, which will allow you to quickly or very slowly proceed through a game um, that might be difficult otherwise. However, the effect is really annoying as it affects, you know, music and affects, you know, not everything, basically. And in a lot of games, there's a sound effect when you press start. It's like, you know, do do or something, you know, and so you get do 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 you know, it's over and over and over. And so because of that, I mostly never use that. Um, another thing this NES Advantage has is this um, 1 and 2 player switch. Um, the NES Advantage actually has, right on its controller cord here, is two controller ports. One for player 1 and one for player 2. That means that this can be plugged right into your system, um, and this thing can serve as both a player 1 controller and a player 2 controller. Um, by flicking the switch, it switches between whichever controller it is. This is intended for games that are use um, alternating players. Like if you have, like playing Super Mario Brothers, for instance. Um, if you're playing as Mario, player 1 is Mario, and player 2 is Luigi. Um, player 1 plays the game, and then when they die, um, they switch to player 2 and hand the joystick off to the second player. And then the second player would then um, be able to play the game until they die. And then switch it back to player one, and then player one gets to play. Um, it's not really needed, but it is kind of a neat little feature that they didn't have to add, but they did. But, and you know, it, it made sure that parents wouldn't be, you know, forced out to go and buy a second NES Advantage, because back in the day, these things were not cheap. Um, the NES Advantage is a fairly weighty controller thanks to a giant metal plate that it has on the bottom of the, bottom of the controller. This means that this thing won't tend to move around too much, um, especially on a coffee table or anything when you're pressing, when you're applying force down to, downwards, especially, you know, because you're not going to be like shaking it from side to side because, you know, not a motion controller or anything like that. Um, but overall, I think the NES Advantage is probably one of the weaker joysticks of the 80s. It definitely has some really cool features, but the fact that the B and A buttons get stuck so often um, really renders them sort of useless and makes me much prefer, you know, just like a turbo handheld controller as opposed to the arcade stick. Um, I have looked into possible ways to modify the NES Advantage by putting in real micro switch controllers and everything. Unfortunately, because of how shallow the NES Advantage is on the on the sides, this means that there isn't enough space for you to plug in um, like an actual micro switch button um, that you need for in a real arcade machine. Like, because those buttons tend to be about mm, this big. So if I was going to put that in, it would you know it would mean that this entire end of the bottom of the board would need to be extended somehow and that might be possible I might be able to like get you know some piece of wood or something to extend um, the edges here but another problem is that these that all the rest of the buttons um, the turbo buttons the potentiometers um, and these buttons are all basically surface mount and they basically attach directly to the motherboard which is literally literally about mm, half an inch if not less um, below where you're seeing the, the external plastic that means that even if I put um, some sort of extension down um, the NES advantage would still be a pain to work with be this essentially is more trouble than it's worth to mod um, which is really a shame because if I could get this to be you know really good micro switch buttons here um, like put in I don't know 18 inch or 20 millim or, or 20 millimeter I said 18 millimeter or 20 millimeter buttons um, and put in an actual micro switch joystick in here I think this would be a really really fantastic um, retro gaming controller unfortunately as it stands this is just a curiosity of retro gaming uh, memorabilia. If you like retro gaming, um, I definitely recommend you pick up an NES Advantage, you know, just for, you know, nostalgia sake or just for history sake, but it's not really a greatest controller to use general purpose. It's okay to use for, you know, maybe flight games or something where you can simply hold the button down and then just, you know, never have to rapidly press it. But for anything that you have to, you know, like platformers or shoot 'em ups or um, basically RPGs or anything that you basically have to press the buttons multiple times, you have to make sure you're pressing them dead center or they'll get stuck, which is a pain, right? Anyway, so thanks for watching, guys. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see next in the Controller Chronicles HD, let me know. And uh, let me know if you have any thoughts on the NES Advantage, memories, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.